Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked where I climb the online VGC 15 ladder. Still going to be using the same Mega Gardevoir team as the previous couple of episodes as we continue our climb till the 1900s. As you see currently, our rating is 1860 with a win-loss record of 47-16. So we are only 40 points away from 1900, which is the goal I've really set for myself for uh, Road to Ranked, so that'd be pretty neat to hit. Um, but we'll see. This team has been a lot of fun to use. Obviously, Mega Gardevoir is not as common as some of the other Megas out there, as our first opponent of the day is going to be an 1865-rated player from Japan. So if we are able to win this, it will give us a huge amount of points. And my opponent here has got a very interesting team, actually. So um, very cool to see such a neat team from a high, you know, high-rated play uh, player. So we see a Bomb Snow, Glaceon, Landris T, Talonflame, Rotomwash, and Breloom. So. Uh, the hail option is obviously there with the Bomb Snow and uh, Glaceon. A Bomb Snow is probably Mega. I'm curious as to what item Glaceon has. Normally, you see a Bomb and Glaceon more on Trick Room hail teams, just because uh, Trick Room complements it pretty well since they are relatively slow Pokemon. But in this case, it might actually be something like a Choice Scarf or maybe a Choice Specs on Glaceon. So I'm not really sure what to expect. Uh, in addition, Breloom is definitely going to be a annoying because it can kind of spore everything. Um, so let's see. He tried obviously walls the Talonflame, the Obama Snow, and the Glaceon. Um, Gardevoir is actually really solid in this match as well. Suicune, if I am able to get up a Tailwind, can set up everything I have in the back. Uh, the one threat to Suicune really is that Breloom, and unfortunately I don't have many great ways to deal with it. So I'm going to lead with Gengar, which is kind of my go-to lead like always. Gengar, and I'm thinking Suicune. Though I really feel like Breloom's going to come out for my opponent, so maybe Gardevoir instead. Let's see, Gengar, Gardevoir, Gengar, Suicune. You know, I'll go Gengar, Suicune. I'll have Heatran in the back to switch into uh, potential Breloom attacks. And for the last one, probably not going to want Zapdos because it's weak to the Ice-type attacks, obviously. Terrakion's not bad here, but at the same time, it can get Mach Punched by the Breloom, and Talonflame gets priority attack on it anyway. So I'm going to go with Gardevoir just because Gardevoir hits my opponent's team harder. Now, this should be a really interesting match, and I'm very excited to battle it, just because I've never actually played a Glaceon in VGC 15. Um, I personally used the Bombstone Glaceon all the way in 2012 on a Trick Room Hail team, and that was a lot of fun to use, but like I said, my opponent does not have the Trick Room option here, as we see Rotom Wash and Landris T coming out against Gengar Suicune, so this is actually a pretty optimal lead matchup. Um, even though Rotom Wash is definitely difficult to deal with, I can... I have a bunch of options here. Breloom, like I said, was one of the more annoying Pokemon that I didn't want to deal with. Um, so what I can do this first turn is... Hmm. I have a bunch of options here. I, that Rotom is definitely the biggest threat to my team, so I'm going to want to try to take care of that before anything else. Though Landris also annoys the, uh, the Heatran I have in the back. What I kind of want to do here is Will-O-Wisp the Landris and set up a Tailwind. Though there's a chance that that Landris is Scarfed. Mm, let's see, if it's Scarfed though, it's probably going to Rock Slide. Maybe EQ and T-Bolt the Suicune, but then I get to burn the Landris. So you know what? Yeah, I really want to set up a Tailwind because I need this uh, Gardevoir in the back to be set up. And he does go straight for the Earthquake, revealing the Choice Scarf. So good play on my opponent's end here. Um, so in retrospect, maybe I could have Icy Winded, but... I'm able to take that EQ without much issue as Gengar does get the Will-O-Wisp off, burning that Landris, uh, and that's going to help me in the rest of the game. We're probably going to see a T-Bow. Oh wow, a Discharge actually. Uh, Suicune should be able to survive this, so hopefully no Paralysis. As... Oh, it does get the Paralysis onto Suicune. Okay, not onto Gengar though, that's good. At least Gengar manages to stay around as I eat my Citrus Berry. Oh, but the full Para too. That really stinks. Hmm... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely makes this match a lot harder because I wasn't able to set up my Tailwind, so, uh, not too pleased about that. I'm just going to Icy Wind here, and I'm going to sack the Sweet Queen, unfortunately. I, I guess I'll go for a Tailwind if my opponent decides to switch out, but nope, he's just going to stay in an Earthquake once again. Uh, so I just definitely wasn't anticipating Discharge, and Discharge is a very annoying to deal with just because it can paralyze things, and I was really hoping to get Tailwind up there. Not going to be the case. Uh, Icy Wind at least fortunately connects with both Pokemon here, so that's at least going to set up Gardevoir in the back, as uh, that's actually going to take out the Landorus uh, after the burn damage, which is pretty cool. And I still have Heatran in the back, which is nice because it can deal with most of my opponent's Pokemon. We do see another Discharge coming out here, though it might knock out both of my Pokemon. 
Oh, Gengar actually hangs on with 3 HP, Now I was kind of hoping he'd knock it out just so I'd get a free switch into the Gardevoir and the Heatran, but fortunately no paralysis there once again, so um, this is a very close game. Once again, not setting up the Tailwind hurts, but um, you know, you have to deal with that, that's just part of Pokemon. I'm going to bring in Gardevoir now, as uh, Talonflame comes out for my opponent, okay. Uh, that's definitely one of the bigger threats to my team. Hmm. As I trace Levitate, that's not going to really help me. We're probably just going to see a... The question is whether my opponent Brave Bird's Gardevoir or Gengar. Hmm. I am Eevee to survive a Choice Band Brave Bird, so I'm not too worried, but... I think what I'm going to do... I feel like he's going to Brave Bird into a Gardevoir, so I'm just going to Sludge Bomb Talonflame here, Mega Evolve, and Protect. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that play. Even if he Brave Bird's the Gengar, then I get a free switch into the Heatran, which I have in the back, so... Not a terrible turn here. The issue is that means he's probably going to be able to Brave Bird my Gardevoir the next turn for loss of damage. So maybe in retrospect, I should have just attacked here. Brave Bird does go into Gardevoir, though, so at least I get the Sludge Bomb off, which should do a ton of damage here. Yep, and T-Bolt does come out onto Gengar. So T-Bolt and Discharge on that Rotom Wash. Interesting moveset for sure, as uh, Gengar, unfortunately, here is going to faint. However, that means I do get a free switch into the Heatron I have in the back. But like I said, that Talonflame is now free to Brave Bird, my Gardevoir. Um, hmm. I think I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to substitute and Hyper Voice. Um, because he's probably going to want to Hydro Pump my Heatran, and he can't knock me out with the Brave Bird here. So Hyper Voice should be able to knock out Talonflame after all that recoil damage. Um, so let's see. Yep, Gardevoir ab able to hang on there with just a sliver of HP. Uh... As I do get a Hyper Voice off, knocks out Talonflame, doesn't do too much of that Rotom Wash because I'm not max special attack since I do choose to invest a bit more in bulk. Heatran does get a substitute up here, so it's going to come down to what my opponent's last Pokemon is, but Heatran actually has a really solid matchup against everything. That Rotom actually goes for a Discharge, excellent move on my opponent's end there, um, and that's going to... Okay, it doesn't break my sub, but... At this point, I think I've actually lost this one. Um, I probably should have doubled up into Rotom there. I probably should have Slush Bomb Rotom earlier, too, just because I knew like, I had Heatran in the back. I suspect, uh... Okay, I think that's... Okay, that's gonna be Breloom, yeah. Um... So... This one was definitely a difficult, uh, game in general, even though it was pretty quick. Um, I think my opponent outplayed me, though. I, sh I, I had a feeling it was going to be Scarf Landris in the beginning, so what I should have done was I should have Icy Winded instead of going for the will o -Wisp onto it. Um, as a Bright Loom is actually Life Orbed, interesting, so if my opponent misses a couple of Hydro Pumps, maybe it's still winnable, since I am able to knock out the Bright Loom. A burn here would be really, really nice. Uh, it would give me a chance to get back into this game. No, no burn, though, as Hydro Pump does connect with the Heatran here. Should have knocked it out, but let's see. Wow, it actually does, so, uh, that's pretty specially invested, uh, Rotom, since I do have a lot of investment in my Heatran's bulk, so I'm unfortunately going to lose the first game of the day pretty quickly, um, and yeah, I thought my opponent played it really well, uh, I'm kind of disappointed in myself for not playing that turn one a bit better, since, like I said, I had a feeling Landris was scarfed, so I shouldn't have Will-O-Wisp there, uh, but the Discharge definitely caught me off guard as well, since it's very rare to see Discharge on Rotom, especially when they run T-Ball, as you saw my opponent did. Um, I also feel like I could have played the endgame a bit better, for example, targeting down the, uh, Rotom Wash with Sludge Bomb instead, um, just because I knew I had Heatran in the back, so well played by my opponent there, and I'm gonna lose, uh, 16 points there as I fall down to 1844. Four. But uh, definitely an interesting team on my opponent's end. Obviously, we didn't see the Abomasnow or Glaceon come up, but that was good management on my opponent's end because, you know, Heatran obviously walls both of those completely. So, uh, very smart not to bring those two. Uh, in the end, ultimately, I feel like that Talonflame... Yeah, it was really the Talonflame and Rotom Wash that I did not manage very well. Um, and in the end, yeah, perhaps if I, like, Psychic Rotom and Heat Wave... I don't know, it would have been a tough match to win just because Talonflame gives me a fair amount of trouble. Um... So I thought my opponent managed that very well. Uh, but like I said, that Discharge just really caught me off guard. And it is a testament to kind of like how having that one key surprise tech move can really uh, come bail you out. Or not bail you out, but just like prove uh, crucial in the beginning of the game. Um, 
And that is why having even one surprise move can be really good on teams, because normally when you play VGC, you know, you expect all your opponent opponent's movesets based off previous standard sets, which you've seen. Um, and in this case, we're going to having the discharge. I mean, obviously able to get the paralysis on Suicune and denying me Tailwind was very unfortunate. Uh, I feel like had I been able to set up a Tailwind there and not get paralyzed, you know, I could have snarled the Rotom, which definitely would have helped me. Um, Suicune wouldn't have been... Um, that week and our second opponent of the day is going to be a 1496 rated player from florida so uh keeping the trend of finding a really high rated player and then a really low rated player or vice versa but uh delfiglo is here got a team of weavile terrakion kangaskhan superior sylveon and meowstic so actually a very threatening team for a lower rated player and uh, this is actually very scary there's definitely the potential beat up combo with weavile and terrakion which is very very threatening um Let's see, what do I want to do? If I could set up a Tailwind here, uh, the Gardevoir really goes through my opponent's entire team. Um, so let's see, I kind of want to lead with Suicune and... I kind of want to go with Suicune and Heatran actually, because I feel like my opponent might bring uh, Superior uh, as a lead, so Heatran obviously counters that immediately. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Now in the back... If I get Tailwind up, Terrakion's a boss, and I think Gardevoir for the last one. Yeah, I'm gonna go with those four. Though I don't have a way to hit the Sylveon for super effective, uh, Heatran really walls Sylveon completely. So, um, that's why I like using Heatran a lot in this format, because it is able to completely wall those common uh, fairy types, namely Sylveon, uh, which it four times resists. So, we'll see, but lower rated player, very uh, impressive team or scary team in team preview, so gonna wanna play this a bit carefully. So let's see. I'm gonna go with Suicune and Heatran. As my opponent goes with Meowstic and Superior. Okay, per pretty perfect here. I was expecting the Superior uh, as it's actually shiny. Um, however, this can be slightly problematic actually because all he has to do is turn one fake out my Suicune. Hmm. No, not Suicune, no, Heatran. You can just fake out Heatran and Leaf Storm the Suicune. And this is quite problematic, actually. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to go for the Tailwind, and I'm just going to go for a Heat Wave. Superior goes for a Protect. That is perfect. Um, I had a feeling maybe it wouldn't go for the attack right away, so we actually see a Thunder Wave coming out, probably until a Heat Trend. Yeah, good play there, but I do set up a Tailwind, which is really good. Uh, but the Paralysis, it... <sighs> As you see here, uh, continuing the trend of paralysis from the previous game, getting the full power onto my Heatran, which is unfortunate. I do set up Tailwind, but that's not... Um, I mean, it is going to help my Gardevoir here in the back, but uh, the paralysis onto Heatran is really good for my opponent because he gets uh, he gets to basically take advantage of it. What I'm going to do is Scald the Meowstic here and just Heat Wave. Uh, I don't want to set up a sub because when you're paralyzed it does get a lot more annoying because your chances of getting fully paralyzed obviously is 25% so uh, I don't want to deal with that right now I just want to pick up the knockout here into superior uh, Meowstic yeah, continuing to spam thunder wave so this is very annoying to deal with hopefully I'm going to be able to get my heat wave off that's what I really want Speaking of gets the Scald off as well, so at least that goes well. Uh, doing a nice amount of damage there to Meowstic. As we do see the Leaf Storm coming out, but Speaking actually avoids it. So, uh, change of events in terms of luck here. And I get a Heat Wave off against both of my opponent's Pokemon, knocking out the Superior. So, with the crit as well, I don't think the crit mattered, but... Um, definitely a change of events in terms of luck there. As obviously, uh, the Paralysis onto Heatran first turn was annoying. Um, but I definitely got the better end of that trade-off. So, I uh, apologize to my opponent there for that miss. Um, you know, it wouldn't have been too bad because sure it would have knocked out Suicune, but Heat Wave would have knocked it out anyway, but that definitely makes this match a bit easier as Kangaskhan comes in for my opponent now. And uh, I'm obviously fine dealing with Kangaskhan since I've got Terrakion and Gardevoir in the back and I still have two more turns of Tailwind. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to Scald the Kangaskhan and I'm actually going to switch my Heatran out into Gardevoir in anticipation of a fighting type attack. Um, if I can knock out the Kangaskhan then Heatran can basically seal up the game. I figure a lot of my opponent's last Pokemon is actually Sylveon, so I guess we'll see. Uh, as I'm going to trace the Prankster, not going to help me much here. Uh, Kangaskhan's going to Mega Evolve. I presume we're going to see a Fighting-type attack onto Gardevoir, but maybe not. Um, like I said, this is a very scary team to go up against, though, for a lower-rated opponent. So Kangaskhan does go for the Fake Out into... Oh, Suicune, actually. Wow. was not anticipating that. Getting a crit there, so lots of crits in this game. Um... As Meowstic goes for the Confide. Huh. Decreasing my special attack. Interesting. 
Was not expecting that, but a uh, nice move from my opponent there. Um, let's see. Uh, Meowstic is actually the bigger, not the bigger threat, but, uh, well, I've got Terrakion in the back, so you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to Skull the Kangaskhan Mega Evolve and Hyper Voice. I'm at minus one special attack, but you know what? That's fine. And that's one of the things I don't like about Gardevoir, is that if you do want to run Mega Gardevoir, you know, you should have some investment in bulk, but then you have to give up special attack. Kangaskhan goes straight for the Sucker Punch onto Suicune. That play makes little sense to me, since uh, I can't really knock out Kangaskhan here, so it should have just went for a normal type attack onto Gardevoir or Suicune, but, oh well. Um, so that's actually going to give me more HP, bringing me down to Citrus. Me also gets another Thunder Wave off, so it's just paralyzing me, my entire team right now. Slightly annoying to deal with, but hopefully I can attack through these paralysis, but unfortunately Gardevoir is going to be fully paralyzed there. Suicune though gets the Scald off, so at least I get some damage off against Kangaskhan. A burn here would be really nice, but no burn, as Tailwind Peter's out as well. So, I'm going to Scald this Kangaskhan once again, and I'm going to... You know, I'm just going to Hyper Voice. Yeah, Terrakion in the back should actually be able to seal things up here. As Kangaskhan just continues to Sucker Punch, I really don't understand these plays. Like, unless it doesn't have Return Slash Double Edge, like, I, I don't really understand why it's Sucker Punching. Um, yeah, so it continues to go for Confi, that's gonna decrease the special attack of my, uh, Suicune, but I'm fine. Gardevoir gets the Hyper Voice off, obviously at minus one special attack, but still able to do a very nice amount of damage there, as Suicune also gets the Scald off, so fortunately there were no full paralysis there. I finally do get a burn with Scald after uh, three Scald attempts, and that's really gonna basically, I think, seal the game up for me. Uh, once again, I do think my opponent should have just gone for a return slash uh, double edge. I wasn't expecting to get an attack off with both of my Pokemon, but you know what? I'm not going to complain. Um, I'm going to go for a Snarl here and another Hyper Voice. And like I said, this Meowstic uh, has no means of offense. Um, and this is kind of one of the best ways to deal with Pokemon that are, you know, pranks or Pokemon that don't have any means of offense. As Kangaskhan goes for another Sucker Punch. Uh, the best way is really to just attack around it. One reason why Thunderous is such a good prankster user is because it gets access to... Uh, good attacks like Thunderbolt and HP Ice, whereas Meowstic really doesn't have any offense. Same with uh, Whimsicott. Um, so it goes for another Confi, but I'm able to knock out both of my opponent's Pokemon there with the Hyper Voice. Uh, so 4 1 in my favor now, regardless of who my opponent has in the back, should be able to seal up the game. Um, Suicune being able to stick around was very fortunate, like I said, because of the Leaf Storm miss. Uh, and in addition, um, I don't know, I feel like my opponent just kind of misplayed towards the end with Kangaskhan. There's really no reason to Sucker Punch when you're bulky enough to take hits, though maybe my opponent wasn't expecting my Pokemon to be more on the uh, defensive end, allowing me to pick up, um, not pick up KOs, but do less damage than expected. Weavile is my opponent's last one, but I've got a Terrakion and a Heatran in the back. It's a 4 on 1 battle at this rate, so what I'm going to do is actually set up Tailwind for Terrakion in the back and Hyper Voice. Uh, as Weavile goes for the Fake Out here, interesting. Uh, I feel like at this point, he should really just be going for uh, damage and attacks. For example, knocking out Gardevoir and hoping for, for a full paralysis on Suicune there. But uh, Weavile is definitely not one of the Pokemon that can win a game after uh, being down 4 1. Like, there are a couple of Pokemon that can do that, mainly set up Mega Evolutions, maybe like Mega Gyarados or Mega Mence, but. Uh, at least picking up a KO onto Gardevoir there, but I set up Koen, which is going to ensure that Terrakion in the back is going to be able to win this game, as Suicune gets another Skull Bop. So this was a definitely an interesting match. Uh, my opponent, I thought, actually had a very competitive team for his rating, which is definitely um, always, like I said, scary to go up against, but I feel like a couple misplays, and obviously I was fortunate for uh, avoiding the... Uh, Leaf Storm in the beginning, that really helped in this match. Didn't think I really needed it since Heat Wave would have knocked him out there anyway, and I had Terrakion in the back. But Double Kick here is able to knock out the Weavile and seal up the game. And since I always get questions, why do you run Double Kick on Terrakion? It's basically to deal with, uh, namely to deal with Bisharps that tend to be Focus Sashed, but sometimes Smeargles as well. And it's a nice way to pick up KOs without decreasing my defense and special defense. So a win and a loss in today's episode. Unfortunately, the loss is going to... Uh, I did end up losing more points than winning, um, and yeah, that first game was kind of a heartbreaker after that first turn, but like I said, I misplayed and I could have uh, managed my uh, end game plan a bit better. So, we are going to split today's uh, game 1-1, so finally taking a loss after a while, but regardless, two really great games, I thought, uh, featuring two of the more interesting teams we've seen in Road to Rank. So, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, leave a like if you did, and I'll see you tomorrow. Alright, peace.